Sounds great. This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. And for those of you who listen to Avoid the Maze, one of the things you notice is we're talking about a life's journey. And that journey for some people is just a straight line. I don't know how they do it. To me, that would be a little bit boring. Uh, But that's what I thought I was going to do when I was 9 or 10 years old. I saw this straight line, knew exactly who I was going to marry, how many kids and all that. But you know, it didn't happen that way. Um, And I'm sort of glad because there's so many options out there. Some of us call them challenges. I prefer calling them an option. And some options are good and some aren't so good. And my guest today is Donna Franklin. And what drew me to Donna was in her bio, she says, how I developed my kick ass mindset <laughs> that's for me because you know what it is all about what we're thinking and how we perceive that and move forward so donna welcome to avoid the maze and uh give us a little bit of background thank you so much karen i am so pleased to be here so i grew up in alabama and it was a small town in Alabama. Um, my mother, she worked um, minimal jobs. Uh, I mean, she worked. She was a very hard worker, but she worked really uh, a lot of jobs that that just didn't pay well. And so she um, actually never graduated from high school, you know, all these, all these things. But um, so she didn't have a good paying job. And for her, um, she had, so uh, there's four of us, four children. My grandmother uh, raised us while she was working, while my mother was working, and um, we grew up really, really poor. And we didn't have food at home most of the time. Um, We were able to, luckily as kids, we had free lunch, which honestly was embarrassing. We didn't want our friends to know, of course, because they made fun of us, but um, it was, it was, it was something that we had to have because we just didn't have food at home. And then eventually, finally, after a few years of us going to school, they started free breakfast, which Karen, it was really, really hard to get from, you know, breakfast to lunch or, I mean, I not even breakfast because we didn't have breakfast, but all, until lunch, right. Sure. To eat. I mean, our heads were hurting and we, you know, we were so hungry and we didn't want the other kids to hear our stomachs growling and, you know, just things like that. Right. So it was really, really, really hard. Um, I, until I was 18, I had never even bought anything new for myself ever at that point. I had hand-me-downs my whole life, right? Which I was made fun of because, you know, if you're wearing the same clothes three and four times a week, you know, kids, kids are going to be, they mean, notice, right? Yep. Yes, they notice. But anyways, so that I, I tell you that because I want everybody to know where I came from. Absolutely. How far I have come, right? Because I, at eight years old in Alabama, at eight years old, I knew I wasn't going to stay there. And I knew I was leaving from there. I don't know how, but it was just something internal, right? And I I really, now looking back, I feel like I knew that and I, I so that I could move forward and make better decisions than all my family members, right? Um, so, cause nobody else left. I was the only one that escaped, right? Really? Wow. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> and so, um, I did move to Denver. I was in Denver for quite a while and I have one daughter. I mostly raised her in Denver and then we moved to San Antonio and I started real estate in San Antonio. And when I was in Denver, my career, I worked for the government for, uh, for quite a while and I did very well. But I didn't like the job, you know, I just, I mean, and I had several jobs, but I just didn't like it. Uh, But I did my best. Honestly, I really did have a good attitude. And I know that's how I made the progression, you know, as far as getting promoted. And then when I moved to San Antonio and started real estate, it was like, oh my gosh, I love the job, but it was so hard to break into. It took me three years, right? But 
finally, after three years, I started making three or six figures. And so going from poverty to making six figures and all along the journey, that's what, that's why I wrote that book. Honestly, Karen wrote, wrote my book because I just thought everybody needs to know you can start from even worse than what I had. And and you can make a success of your yourself, but it all it it's just in your mind. You have to make sure that you're thinking properly and that you're thinking that you're going to you're going to survive and you're going to thrive. Um, do you think do you mind if I tell you the story that I that just happened? Oh, go right ahead. So I'm speaking, I'm doing speaking engagements too. And it has been such a thrill. I, I I always thought, you know, growing up as a child, when you're kind of put down a lot, I, I was really, really shy, you know, and, and I really knew that wasn't me, but you know what I'm saying? So I had to come, come into my own. And so I've been speaking on my book and um, I guess I should tell you this. So I... A few years ago, I had always wanted to take martial arts and I love Bruce Lee. Most people will know who Bruce Lee is <laughs> and I loved him. And I was like, oh my gosh, if I could just be anywhere close to him. So I, I knew I was going to take martial arts eventually. And I did. It took me five and a half years, but I finally got my black belt. So that's why I wrote this book is developing your kick-ass mindset so that I could show other people, you know what, I'm going to help you to break boards. I'm going to help you to, sh or to show you that you can do anything you put your mind to, right? Absolutely. So, during my speaking engagements, I actually provide the boards. I provide a marker. At the end of the class, I talk about Bruce Lee and how I got my black belt. And then I say, okay, I want every one of you that want to try to break a board or that want to break a board, mark write down that board, something that you're struggling with, and we're going to break through it. Well, struggling or, or you want to accomplish whatever it is, right? So I'm holding the boards. Nobody else wanted to hold the boards. <laughs> and so I'm holding the boards for everybody. And this one little lady, she comes up, she hands me the board, and I didn't see what she had written on there because it was very personal. And um, I didn't want to cry, but she hands me the board and she says, Donna, she said, my oncologist would not be happy with me right now, but she said, I'm breaking this board because I'm beating cancer. That just gave me chills wow. again, because when she said that, I was like, I hope this is okay to say, hell yes, you're going to yes, break you're absolutely. Gonna this cancer. And I, so I said, do it right now. Right. She broke that board and her whole persona changed. I know that she is going to beat cancer because she is was so amazed that she broke that board. But her whole she she changed, and it was like I know this was the first time that she knew she was going to beat it, and it was so amazing. I was like, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm supposed to do this. Right. Absolutely. I love it. Was it was amazing. That just happened two weeks ago. That's why I'm like, oh, my oh gosh. I love you it. Know? And it's it a amazing. story that you should repeat because, you know, most of us probably think I'm not really not going to break the board, but you break the board. You're breaking it for a very specific reason. And now there's this hope which does change the mindset. It's not just saying, I'm going to beat this. It's like, wow, I've taken the first step to beating this. And what I like to tell people is that when you're on this journey and making these changes, it's not about the end result. Because some of us may not get to the pinnacle. Right. Right but we're on the way. We're doing the things that are motivating us, giving us purpose, making us feel like, hey, I have the ability 
to do this. Um, I I reflect back to when my youngest son was getting ready to graduate high school. And um, that December, uh, he had just gotten into the college he wanted. He went and told his grandmother. And a week later, his grandmother passed away. But he felt accomplished because he had shared it with the most important person in his life. And I was so glad to share that, that oh. he was, you know, that she was so important to him, That's but amazing. it was right after she passed away that my husband said to me that he was going to go back to school. Um, Cause he had been two credits away from his bachelor's. Oh, wow. And I said, okay. And he says, I'm going to go on for a master's. <laughs> and I, looked at him and it was like, all right. He went and started halfway through his semester. I looked at my son and my husband. And I'm thinking, I have an associate's degree. It's not good enough. Not good enough for me. Nobody had ever said anything about it. And so behind their backs, I started checking out how I could get my degree didn't tell them I was going to go from a program from bachelor's to master's. I figured they would know it at some point. But prior to that day, I didn't think I was smart enough to take the classes. I know I was smart enough to understand the information, but I never was a great student. Mm -hmm. But I pledged to myself, I was going to graduate with honors. Wow. And inside, I giggled about it all the time. Like, huh, who do I think I am? <laughs> but it was that mindset. And every time I got an assignment, it was like, I'm going to do my absolute best because my absolute best will be an A. And I just started rolling through classes like that. It's like, that's amazing. I'm getting these grades. Why <laughs> didn't I do it before? When I graduated, I figured it out. I didn't have the mindset. Okay. Exactly right. And so I love your story because here you are, this young child in a family that truly is struggling. Um, you probably mm -hmm. didn't even know what it meant to have a house full of food at the time. Yeah. You know, probably oh, was no. a dream. Never. Yeah. Um, and yet you knew by the time you were 18 years old, I'm going to get out of here, not because I don't love these people, but I can't live like this anymore. Right. You know, it's interesting. So, so it, when you just said that it re reflected, I reflected back as I was writing my book, um, I, I, you know how you push memories away that aren't good. Right. And I came, I mean, memories kept coming back to me on different things. And so when I was, so I was eight, actually, when I knew that I was leaving Alabama, right? But at 18, this is what happened. So I had never purchased anything for myself as far as clothes. We didn't have the money. I started working um, at 16 when I was still in college or high school. And it was a DECA program. So it was half, you went to school half the day and then you worked the other half right. and just so that I could make some money. And, and so I bought my own car, like $500, you know, yeah. and uh, of course I didn't have $500. So I had to pay out, you know, yep. anyway, but um, so two years later, I, it was, I was 18 and I thought I need to get some clothes, even just, you know, one pair of pants and a shirt or whatever. Um, and so, cause it took me that long to actually build up some money. Right. Cause it was just a, it was, a, I worked at a shoe store, you know, <laughs> part time. Right. And, and so I went into the store and I didn't know how to buy clothes. I, I didn't know. Honestly, that day, I don't, I still, I don't remember. It was such a traumatic experience. I don't remember if I bought anything. But I went, when I got in my car, I, this is the memory that came back. 
I remembered thinking, I am not living like this again. I'm not going to live like this ever again. I'm going to find out and listen and learn as much as I can so that I can have more, that I can fulfill what my purpose is on this life or, you know, on this journey, whatever that is. And so that was, that's the start of when I realized at 18, I am not living, I will not live like this, right? I am going to survive. I'm going to thrive and I'm going to make a success of my life. So how did your family feel about this? Because like you said, you're the only one who really moved away. Did yeah. they feel, was there any resentment? Was there joy for you? You know, it's interesting. I, I love my family, um, but everybody was so dysfunctional. You know, it was such a dysfunctional thing. It, it was, nothing was discussed. You know, I just decided I'm, I'm leaving, you know? And um, I mean, so it wasn't, I think it was almost like a, my, except for my grandmother, she, she wanted me to be around, but I think for my mother, I think it was almost like, okay, great. That's one less person to be around that I have to, you know, worry about. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if that's really what she thought, but that's what it seemed like. Cause there was no discussion. It was like, okay. You know, so I don't think that there was resentment. I really don't because everybody's just trying to survive there, you know? Um, and so, and then that's when I started my journey of survival and thriving and, and, and all of that. So that that's what a great question. I've 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 been on a lot of podcasts, but I've never had that question. I think that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Well, because they're all you really knew. Okay. Um, they understood your struggle, you understood their struggle. And so sometimes when that one person sort of deviates, um, people become either resentful or it's, hey, take me on the journey with you. Uh, right. And, you know, I had a totally different upbringing than you did. Uh, my parents didn't have a lot of money, but there was always food in the house. Wonderful. There was a lot of times when we were told, no, we couldn't have certain things. Um, we thought my parents were just being strict. It wasn't until my brothers and I got old enough to understand, hey, they're struggling with money. Um uh, but we never felt poor in the respect that we had this cohesive family. And so Fantastic. when I hear your story, which is not an unusual one, um, right. and for our listeners, um, we all travel differently, okay? We all come into this world, you know, differently, and we're going to leave differently as well. That's right. <laughs> but nobody really cares about the day that we were born or truly the day we die. It's what happens in between that makes us feel good. And when we're feeling good, boy, that that transmits. So it's I awesome. can't imagine what it was like in your house if nobody was really feeling good. Yeah, it was, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, <clears throat> gosh. Um, yeah, but, and you know, that's what I, I, I wanted to make sure as I got older and thinking, am I, you know, if I have children or whatever, I did not want my child to, to have to worry about those kind of things. Right. And so I think that's why I got the job that I didn't like, but I knew, cause I knew it was secure. It was a secure job. It was, uh, I could, I had health insurance. I had, you know, those type of things that that we didn't have growing up. I mean, so I was the first one to graduate from high school in my entire family. The first one. Wow. And then my sister, my oldest sister, let's see, probably about, probably about six or eight years after I graduated. She's two years older than me, but she actually was able to get away because she was with this horrible man and um, she got away from him and she got her uh, GED and she became a nurse 
amazing nurse. She was, she was an amazing nurse. So she has been a success story as well. Right. Um, my younger sister, I have two younger sisters, but one of them has had a lot of health issues. So she hasn't been able to do what she needed to do. But my youngest sister, she owns a, um, a, like a Seven Eleven back in Alabama. And so, you know, so each one of us have ta has taken different journeys. Um, <clears throat> but in our own way, we've all been successful, more, much more successful than, than our parent, you know, or than our mother. Right. We didn't know our father. We, none of us knew who our fathers, you know, were. Um, but, um, but it's interesting because my sister, actually, my oldest sister, she did find her father through one of the, you know, uh, the things and, um, she's, she's got a whole nother family, you know, but so, and, and sometimes that works out, you know, which is wonderful. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't, um, <laughs> but congratulations to her. And, but as I'm listening, you know, in the beginning, I only heard about your success because that's basically what your book and the podcasts are about. But I'm so glad that you were able to show us that all of you sort of found your way, you know, differently, which is right. absolutely fine. And, you know, we're individuals, so we're not going to all take the same path. Um, I know when I was growing up, uh, I grew up in Michigan, and my parents really thought that someday uh, their kids would mature find the love of their lives, live in the same city. They would be able to go <laughs> visit back and forth. And um, I was, you know, my middle brother was the first one to move away. Mm -hmm. um, then I moved away. And my oldest brother lived in Michigan for quite a while. And then he moved away. Wow. And I remember my mother saying, my children are so different. And we are, but when we are together, we're like one. And to me, you know, I have to thank my parents and the environment that we lived in. But when you don't have that and you create it on your own, that to me is amazing. You know, how you could just drive away at the age of 18 and find your way to where you are now yeah it, it was hard I'm not saying it wasn't right it, it was really difficult sometimes but I I just had this inner inner drive I knew I just needed to to do something different right and um yeah it's it's been a journey that certainly has been a journey <laughs> I I do want to tell you kind of what um what I've done too is um about five years ago, I, it's, it had been two years. So it's been about seven years ago that I started getting this little voice saying, you need to do something. You need to help others. You need to help others. Right. And of course, when my daughter was growing up, we would actually find that we would talk to the counselor at the school and we'd find the children that needed help and we would give them Christmas. Right. And so I wanted to make sure she knew, yes, she had a lot, but she needed to know that she needed to help others, right? And so she learned a lot from that. And, and years later, we would see some of these kids and they would come up to us and hug us, right? Just because, I mean, it was so, I was like, oh my gosh, it was so awesome. But at that same school, I started finally after being, trying to kick be kicked in the butt, you know, like for two years. Okay, Lord, I, I will do it. Finally, after two years, I went to the school and it was funny. So I walked into school and the, um, I was scared to death. I'm thinking I'm a grown adult. What are you scared about? You know, but I walked in there and of course they have all the security and I was having to talk to the secretary. And I said, um, you know, I, I'd like to talk to the principal or assistant principal. And she said, what's this about? And I said, well, it's about a personal matter, you know, because I didn't want to start telling her everything because I didn't, right. uh, 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 you know. And so she said, okay, so she, the assistant principal, uh, I was able to talk to him. 
And I explained, I said, my daughter went to the school. We used to help the kids in the school, but I just have something that I, in me, that I need to help with kids that don't have food because I grew up like that. So we actually started a program at that school district and I want to, I want to continue it, but this is what, what we started. So the kids, we, I bought all the backpacks. So I supply the money and it's out of my own pocket. And the counselor, she goes and buys the like non-perishable foods and things like that. And right now there's 25 at just one school during the pandemic, it got up to like 78, right? But 25 right now. And so all the backpacks, the the kids come in, they pack their own backpacks on a Thursday. And and I know this program's around, but the, it wasn't at that school. So it was great that I could right. start that. But the kids come in on Thursday, they pack their backpack. If they have siblings, they pack extra for their siblings. And then they take that backpack home with them so that on the weekends, they're not hungry they actually have food and so then they bring the backpack back the next week and it starts all over again <clears throat> and honestly it's been such a great thing because being on these podcasts has been so amazing because there's so many people that want to help out and I really want to spread this throughout you Absolutely. know all of San Antonio and I have had so many people to because I just supply the 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 link for the school and they they, they're able to have that extra money for, to build out the program, which has been amazing. But for these kids to not have to worry about it, like we did, you know, growing up, it just, it just warms my heart. I mean, it really, it's just something that I needed to do, you know? You know, and sometimes if we don't have the money, there are other ways of doing these things. Number one, um, connecting with somebody who might be able to supply um, you know, it's so many of us say, well, I can't do it because, you know, I'm struggling or I can't do it for whatever reason. Um, right. I remember when my son was 11 years old, I think he was 11. Um, a, it was the Sunday of the Super Bowl, And all of a sudden we heard all these fire engines and noise in the city and we found out that a young boy uh, perished in a fire his father i believe got out his mother and sister were out of town um oh. and when my son found out who it was he said i know him he's not in my class but i know who he is what can we do and you know, my thought was, you know, I, what can you do? Okay. Um, but I said, you know what, when you go back to school on Monday, um, why don't you ask the teacher if there's something the class can do? And once he did, they came up with every child in the classroom had to come up with a project. And she was thinking, you know, they were going to go cut grass and, you know, make a few bucks. And that's what a lot of them did. You know, they had bake sales or whatever. And they were given like 30 days to do this in. And then whatever money they collected was going to go to the family. Now, here is my son at 11 years old. And he goes, that's not enough money. We oh. can't just do that. <laughs> and I said, well, what are you thinking of? And he yeah. said, let's have an evening out for the parents. And they drop their kids at the school. We get teachers and some parents to chaperone. Parents can go out because their kids are safe. So it's a kid's night out, parents night out. And we charge for it. And I oh my said, gosh. I said, so what would we charge? And he goes, well, enough to cover the expenses of maybe having pizza and drinks. I said okay, where are we going to get these pizza and drinks? <laughs> he said, well, we're going to go into town. And we went to the pizza, one of the pizza places. And he told them, they said, how many pizzas do you think you're going to need? We knew what the maximum number of kids was that we could have in there. We told them and they said, oh, no problem. We'll donate it. Oh my gosh. And then he went to McDonald's and he said, I need drinks. They said, 
how many, and they came up with these big containers and they said, you pick them up and bring them back. You know, you tell us how many you need. Wow. And his father and I looked at him knowing that it was going to be a lot of work for us, but sure. I was so proud of the fact that he realized having a bake sale was a great idea, but they were going to bring in maybe five, ten dollars The family right. needed more than that. And oh my so, gosh. You know, he did it and he, a couple of years back, he said, you know, I don't know why they don't do this as a regular basis and have a fund for families that need something extra. And, wow. You know, and I didn't think of it until you were telling me. And it's like, there are so many things because I don't think my husband and I put in a penny. Did we put in a lot of hours? Absolutely. Absolutely. But at the end of it, we felt so proud of our 11 year old who developed the idea. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there, again, with that mindset, there are things we can do that, Absolutely. you know, we're, we're unaware of. And I think it's I love so that. That is so cool. Wow. What a lot. Yeah. Out of the mouth of babes, what yep. a what a eleven years old, great, yep. what a what a wonderful, yeah. So now that you've written the book and you're out there speaking, um, do you feel different, or do you sometimes still feel like that eight year old little girl who is looking to get out? Oh, absolutely. You know what? I think we all go back. You know, we all because that's what we knew right and that's that was our formative years right and so yeah I still I still revert back to that mindset sometimes and like you said who am I to do this or right or can I do this and I I instantly I've trained myself now to where as soon as I start getting those negative thoughts I have to change that thought because that'll bring you down right then. And so it's taken a while for me to figure out how to get out of that. And even, I mean, even to this day, it, I still go back there, but yet I, I just have to, at that point, I tell myself right at the, okay, stop it. <laughs> Look where you are. Look what you've accomplished. And let's move forward. And you're here to help others. That's honestly, when I discovered that in my life, that that was something that I felt like I, that's why I was here. That's my purpose. That's what I go back to every time. I'm like, nope, you are not going to be selfish. You are not going to think that negative way. You have got a purpose. Just get over yourself and let's move forward. I <laughs> you know. It. So how does your daughter react to knowing where you came from and where you are today? She's pretty proud. She's pretty proud of me. Um, she actually has two little ones of her own. She's a nurse. Um, she has two little ones. When she started nursing school, she had a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Oh, wow. And so she, she has, she, she has my work ethic. Um, which I am so happy that I've passed that on to her, but she has really worked hard to get to where she's at and, and is doing just, she's thriving. She's doing amazing. Thank you so much for asking about that. Well, and you know, sometimes we don't think about those, the other people around us who have gotten some of that energy from us. Um, I believe that I got a lot of energy from my father who every morning when he'd wake up, he'd look in the mirror and he'd shout, wake up the whole house. <laughs> Hello, handsome. It's a wonderful day. You know, you know and it could have been snowing <laughs> buckets out there. And um, knowing that, you know, my brothers had to go out and shovel the snow or whatever, but he still looked at every day as a beautiful day. And so the days that I wake up thinking, really, you know, I just want to pull the covers over my head. I think, <laughs> um, 
And I realized <laughs> that my youngest son, um, now, especially now that he's moved away and he's on his own, he's doing things and saying things that um, we tried to encourage when he lived here. And of course, he didn't want to hear anything of it. Um, of course. But it's, you can, you can see that growth. You can see that he knows, like I said, he just moved to Texas three months ago, um, loves his job, but everything else has been difficult. Um, yeah. In fact, being uh, iced in for a week uh, with oh, the ice right. storm that you guys had, <laughs> uh, working from home all alone. Um, but <laughs> he too now has that attitude. Okay. This may not be going right right now. All right. Where can I step to make it feel a little bit better? And that's um, what he's doing. And so awesome. to everyone out there, um, it's up to us to do it. it you can't, if you had waited around for your mother to take your hand, she didn't know how to do that. She couldn't have led you. No. No, she couldn't. And, you know, honestly, my grandmother couldn't. She just provided love that we just needed the love that she provided. Right. There really wasn't much guidance. And and that's what I, I try to tell my daughter. Listen, I had to learn everything on my own. Right. Yeah. And it was it was some embarrassing moments sometimes, you know, because I didn't know. For example, um, when I was married to my daughter's uh, father. We went to before she came along, we went to a, a friend's house, one of his friend's houses, and we brought some, like some drinks and some food. Well, as we were leaving, and this is just the mindset, you know, I, I think I was 21 and we were leaving and I said, oh, I got to get the, get the, the stuff. I, I didn't realize you're supposed to leave what you bring. Right. Right. I, I never, that never entered my mind because I had never done that before. Right. And he was so embarrassed and I was so embarrassed after I found out, but just things like that. So you have, you know, I had to learn everything on my own. I right. I know I'm not different than, than a lot of people, but you get through it and you do learn and you move on and you become a stronger, better person Absolutely. for it. Right. And honestly, I really do feel but the reason I had to go through that, all the poverty and all that, is so that I can help these kids these days. I, I really do feel that. Absolutely. I love it. So tell my listeners how they can find you and get your book and learn more about you. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I, if they will go to my website and it's www.donna-franklin.com. So pretty easy. Um, then uh, they can find out more about me. They can purchase my book. And I'd also like to say, so I, I wrote a, a course to go along with the book because you know, as well as I do, when you read something, if you don't take action, then right. you're going to forget, right? Right. So I created a, an amazing course to go along with the book to help every single one of my, the ideas that are in there to get more cemented into their minds and into their habits. But I also, just for your listeners, I created a mini course that if anyone's interested, I would, I would love to send that to you and you could forward it to them or they can just, you know, however they want to get in touch with me. My email is pretty easy. It's uh Donna Franklin at kw.com is one of the uh, emails. Um, or I also have Donna at DonnaJFranklin.com. If they email me, I would love to send them the mini course just for free and just say, hey, you know, and, and you know, it's interesting if if they didn't want to purchase the, the book at first and they wanted to just check out the mini course, they can get enough out of that to realize, you know what? I really do want to get the book. Right. Because the mini course will help them to go, oh, okay. And help to get some other ideas going. I love that. Well, so. that will all be in the show notes. So to our okay. listeners, you know, if you didn't catch it all, don't worry about it. Go back, read the show notes, copy and paste them wherever you need to do that. Um, in the meantime, Donna, this was a delight. 
Um, Thank you. So you know, much. sometimes you hear somebody's backstory and you go, yeah. oh, my God, you know, and you're sitting here and you just don't know what to say. But when they take that backstory and they grow it and they do something positive for themselves, it's just knowing that we live in the most wonderful world. So we do. We do. And it's been such a pleasure to meet you and to talk to you. And I love your story too. And your kids. What amazing. I mean, just, I Thank love you. that. Well, we'll okay. talk to you again soon. Thank you, Thank you very so much. much. Bye-bye now. Bye.